Hi, so this video will go over how to create a SharePoint site. Um, and this is an update to a previous video I posted since the the way to create this, these uh, SharePoint sites has really changed. Um, and it's although it's a bit un unfamiliar compared to the previous versions, it's certainly, I think, a lot more intuitive and has many less steps. So instead of going to the newsfeed um, tile, which you would have done in the previous version, now you, of course, go to SharePoint to create a SharePoint site. So you click on that tile once you're logged on to Office 365, of course. And you click on the plus the plus sign here, plus create site. And for a class website, this uh, the communication site is your best choice. So click here. Now you're well on your way. So you can give your site a name. Let's just call this test class website. And off to the left, you have different types of designs. Now you can choose any any design you really like. Uh, it just shows you how that might look, both on a desktop or laptop screen, computer screen, and a mobile device. Um, experimenting with these three, I think I'm going to go with blank, just because it's less, it's more of a blank canvas. But if you want a site that's not necessarily almost ready, but already designed for you, you can go with topic or, or showcase. To show you different uh, types of editings and different uh, options for your sites, I'm gonna start off with blank. You can, if you'd like to enter a site description, um, if you end up wanting to change your site name, you can certainly do that afterwards. Nothing here is set in stone. And if you click finish, you're you'll see that in just a moment, the site will be created. Now, although technically at this point, you do have a website, it, it, is, it is blank after all, uh, and you'll have to, you'll have to make, uh, make it your own, personalize it and edit it. Now, to do that, you can click on a few things, a few, a few ways you can, you can edit your site. There's the edit button here to the right. And what this does now is it um, creates a, an, an editing page uh, on your home page of your site where you can add different sections and you can add different layouts for these sections. So two columns, three columns is really, you don't really have too many options besides the six that are here. Um, let's just choose, we'll leave that one column for now and going to add just some text. Let's put in a title page. So this can be Mr. Zapito's website. I'm going to highlight it. I'm going to make it bold. Oops, no, cancel that. Highlight that. Let's make it a heading. Let's center it, bold it, underline it. Of course, there are more options for you to choose here. You can be more specific about your font size. Um, there you go. You can play around with styles and colors and all. So all that here is off to the right after clicking on the three buttons. So. There, that's that uh, portion is done. Uh, you can also continue to add more sections, different layouts. It doesn't have to be all the same. So here I can choose two columns. And once those sections have been added, then I can add by clicking on these plus signs, different web parts. Now there are many kinds of web parts. Um, some new features in this in this uh, version is um, we'll get to this in just a bit. Hero is is pretty cool. It looks like it's already up pre-made layout with links and pictures that you can automatically um, get this web part to, to, to format for you. And it just it lo it looks really nice. Um, I'm going to show you a few things. It's going to show you a picture gallery, um, how to embed a YouTube video, and finally how to put in or how a hero web part looks like. So I'll put a an image gallery and it brings you to we have a few options here. I can upload some videos. I can find some websites with some videos. Um, I'm going to upload, sorry, not videos. I mean um, images. So <clears throat> I'm going to open up a folder that I have preset with some pictures. Just find it first. So let's see if I can highlight all of them. Yep, I've highlighted all my pictures. You can choose one at a time if you'd like. I'm going to click open and I'm going to add four images. So I've added these four images. There's there's a certain order you'd like. Um, you can always move these. Here are options to move. Right. You can edit this. 
Um, you get different details here. You can give that particular one a title, a caption, um, or you can always delete them. So those are those four pictures. And that's what I wanted to do there in that, uh, in that tile to the left. I can add a title, let's say uh, class go. Make sure your cursor is clicked there. Uh, class <clears throat> image gallery. That's one column off to the right. I'll show you the next part. We'll embed a video. So here you click embed and you can add an embedded code. So this is a code from a YouTube video. And to do that, let's go on to YouTube. And we'll do science experiments, I'd say. Okay, this looks like something I might want to put on and I don't have to I don't have to play it. Um, I'm going to click on share. I'm going to copy this code that pops up. That's copied, it says, just off here to the right, to the bottom left. Click back on the tab. Now I'm going to click add embed code. And off to the right, and they're already appeared. I guess I must have already clicked it, but I'm going to paste. All I did was control V or, well, there you go. It, it works. Or if I delete that, you just click right click and you can click paste and it should automatically load the video there to the left. So you see it's, it's worked and it's automatically resized to fit that web part. All right. So the next part, I'm going to put in a hero web part. Let's make this one column. So I've added a new section. I'm going to add a new web part. You can scroll down to many options for you. Um, something fun to add is you can add websites, your Twitter, your Twitter uh, stream. Um, the weather, weather's great to add. So I'll choose the hero web part. Now this that's you. So it's it's already created, pre-formatted, uh, pre-laid out. I believe is better uh, better to say. So you can have two tiles, um, three tiles off to the well, one larger one, two off to the left, to the right. Here you can select a link. <clears throat> you can want to run a web search using Bing. I'm going to click a uh, category. You don't have to choose these categories. You can search. You can search this website. I'll choose this. It has it automatically saved as a preset where when you search, it's under Creative Commons only. So that's set for me. Say I want to make a link to, to this site. That'll be my picture that automatically loads. I click here and that picture loads there. So now I can continue by clicking the next one. I'm going to run a web search. This time I'll choose uh, math. I'll say math. I've clicked enter. <clears throat> this is a site I'd like to choose to link on my website. So I'm going to click that that picture and we'll do this once more let's say Shakespeare um, here okay so I've now created this hero um, web part and on each of these pictures, I can edit edit them individually. This is the link where that's going to link to when you're when out, when someone's on your page and wants to and clicks on this part of that web part. Uh, you can give it a title. Um, let's say best practices in a class. So see how it updates it there to the left. Um, you can modify your image so it doesn't have to be the image that the website has found or that. Um, the search engine here is found. You make it a custom image. You can make it just one plain color. You can add some some more text to, to describe. Click here um, to learn more. Okay, you can continue to edit here as well. So we'll give that a title, math resources, for example. <clears throat> and to save, you need to make sure before you exit, you save and close. So that is your 
website. It's well on its way. It looks pretty good. And when people come in, they can click on this and it'll bring them to that particular page. Now, this may not be what you want to use, but it's just an example. I'm going to go back now to my site. Sometimes when it doesn't quite go back properly, the back button that is just click home. Okay, so this is a website. Now, if, if someone, if you do invite somebody to your site, it's not actually, they're not going to be able to see any changes you've made until you publish your site. So if you hit publish, it now has made it, any changes you've made will now become visible to whoever joins your site. One more way to change your website to personalize it is click on, clicking on the cog up to the right. You can click on change the look and you can choose a color theme. Right, so we'll just choose this one, let's say. If that works for you, then that's great. Uh, you can also change um, change how it looks um, to make it look a bit more like the previous versions you had in the former version of, uh, of subsites. So if you cl click on the bottom here, classic, change the look, it shows you different styles. So here are these styles. You might like this one here. Click on that. Here are the color schemes again. You can change a color scheme, um, whatever suits you. You have your site layout here where you have Seattle to the left where your menus are, menu options to the left. You have Oslo where they're at the top. Um, you can choose different fonts to the bottom left. If you click on try it out, it shows you what your website will look like. If you like it, you can say yes, keep it. Otherwise you can go back and fix things. Okay, now usually it brings you back to your site settings or what's called your content, your site contents page. Um, that's just a default navigation. Just go back, click on home, and you're back to your main page. So one last thing, if you'd like to add, uh, it's great for organizing any class resources, you can add what's called the document library. So there are links to the either the left or, or left side here or the or the top however you'd like them to be um, by changing again you can go to Seattle or Oslo that's the cog <clears throat> change the look and you click on change or classic change look options and you'll have an option there you can select to have your links appear on either the left or the top I'm gonna click on new go to document library and you can say unit one chemistry Make sure that this button is clicked, show in site navigation, otherwise it won't appear. Um, so make sure that's clicked. It is defaulted to click, so it should be okay. Click create. And there's that folder. Now again, go to home. After you've made a change, sometimes it brings you somewhere else and you can see unit one chemistry is there. Um, you can click on that. And here you can simply click and drag or you can upload files you already have for your whatever resources, um, homework, lessons you can place here, assignments. Um, you can click upload files or entire folders. Or if you want to browse using your own explorer here, you can click and drag files on. So I'll do that now. Just bring this, click and drag, and it uploads. And there it is, ready for your class to access. So that's document library. Again, go home, click on home. Um, you can add some more folders, plus new, click document library, unit two, biology, let's say, click create. It'll bring you to that folder. Here's where you can upload, uh, click and drag any class resources. Again, go back by clicking on home. And you're well on your way. If you don't like all these links at the top, I, I usually say delete whatever you don't like. Um, home is always necessary to have documents. We'll just delete that. Pages, we'll remove that. Any site contents, we'll remove that. And let's just clean it up a bit. So there you go. Well on your way to making a site. A lot more intuitive. Certainly there are things you have to be able um, to navigate and to search for. Hopefully this video will help you do that. A um, couple more quick things that are going to be useful is if you want to delete your site, you might play around with it. it, might not look like you want it to. You want to delete it, start over, click on site information. I'll show you that navigation again. It's clicking on the cog at the top right hand side, click on site information, and then click on delete site. 
that will delete the site. Something else you can do here is you can change the site name. You can also change the logo. If you want to put another picture on it just to personalize it further, give yourself a site description for anyone that's found your site. Um, all these can be changed, of course, including anything here, or rather uh, deleting your site. You can also here, if you're used to the classic version, the previous version of subsites, click on view all site settings, and that'll bring you to more advanced options. Um, if you if you want to get to that, I'll, I'll show you what it looks like. You can click here, and it's all this. So um, certain things are, are useful to know here, uh, but just for the purposes of this just uh, this video, we'll show you that it exists. Uh, it hasn't gone away from its it hasn't disappeared rather in this new version. It is it is still there, but you can find it. I'll go back home by clicking on the cog. and going to site information. You can access those more advanced options. Okay, now the last thing is sharing your site with students. So simplest way, there are a few ways. Simplest one is click share site at the top right hand corner. And here you can share your site. Now you'll see, oh, cancel that, do it again, click share site. Here you see who you've shared your site with. Um, the only person that should be in this group under site owners is yourself. If you want to search for students or you can even share it with other staff, with, with other peers, you can click on that uh, empty field there and start typing either names or employee or student IDs. It's always best to type uh, student IDs because you might have the same, someone might have the same name um, at, in different schools and you might add the wrong person. So I'm going to just type in my own name and it's found me. I click here. So here you want to make sure that you've selected the right uh, permission level. So it's automatically set for read. So if I'm inviting a student, I want to make sure it says read and certainly not full control or edit. You can continue doing this with your class list with your student IDs and they will all receive, students will all receive an email where they'll then be able to access your, your website. And that's all there is for sharing. Now, to remove students, um, again, you go to, I'm going to just cancel this. Well, you do exactly what I'm doing now. Just click on that X, and it's deleted. So going back to share site, you would see a list of students you've shared this with. They would probably be under visitors, because that's the group that they get placed in when they only have read-only access. And off to the right, you would see, well, first you would see the names to the left. Off to the right, you see an X. You can click on the X to delete them. And you can do that at the end of every semester or term and create a new class, a new roster of students. I'll cancel this. What you should instruct students to do when they first log on to your site or access your site is click follow. This way they won't have to find that email that, that they received with a link to your website. Instead, all they'll, they'll need to do is when they log on to Office 365 is go to SharePoint. And a shortcut will appear under SharePoint. So these are the websites I follow. They are uh, they have shortcuts to these to the various websites. Um, that's what they'll be able to see as well. And that's the basics, I guess. So we've gone over creating a website, um, editing the website using your edit tool here, making sure to save and publish when you're finished. Uh, changing the look also by accessing the cog and going to change the look. Finally, to deleting website under site information while also accessing if you'd like more advanced features here changing your name and finally well, very important is to be able to share your sites here you click right there so you can add students or even peers to your site as either members that can edit your site or students probably go under visitors where they can only read